For my final project, I made a Roman Codex, a format of recording literary texts which became common in the 2nd century CE. For my codex, I used techniques from the 4th century CE, around the end of the Roman Empire. For most of the Roman period, ink was a suspension of carbon, water, and gum. The recipe I used was based on that of Pliny the Elder, who called for a mixture of soot, water, and gum. But because I don't have a fireplace, I used mostly the burnt remnants of a candle wick, and also the ashes of a blessed palm from last year's Palm Sunday, which was fitting for what I would write. In old codices, certain letters were accented with red ink. I added beet juice to my ink to form the accent ink. After mixing my inks, I tested them both using my modern calligraphy pen. But a modern pen wasn't fitting for this project, so I made a feather quill. I started with a long feather and then removed barbs from the shaft until it was comfortable to hold. Some ancient quills had all the barbs removed and the skinny end of the shaft cut off, but I chose to keep them for the aesthetic. Once the barbs were removed, I cut off the tip of the shaft. I then cleaned out the dried membrane from inside the shaft using a pin. The quill needs to be tempered to be strong enough to write with, and this can be done either by letting it sit for about three years or by heat treating it. I chose to heat treat it. First, I gathered sand from Wreck Beach, and I then heated the sand up in my oven because I don't have access to a furnace or a fireplace. I heated it up to approximately 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then stuck the quill into the sand and left it to cool. Once the quill was fully cooled, I shaped the tip. It's cut to allow it to hold ink, and a channel is also cut which allows ink to flow to the tip. The size of the tip points are what determines the size of the letters it can write. The quill tip does need to be trimmed and reshaped every few pages to stay sharp. How long it lasts depends on how hard you press down when writing. The script I used is the Roman Uncial script, which was used between the 4th and 8th centuries CE by Latin and Greek scribes, though the earliest examples date back to the late 1st and early 2nd centuries CE. The Uncial script is a magiscal script, so all the letters are capitalized, and the letters are disconnected from one another, but it has no word separation and no punctuation. The text I chose to write is the Gospel of Mark, one of the four canonical Gospels of the Holy Bible. The original Gospel probably dates from between 66 and 70 CE, and was written in Greek for a Gentile audience. The version I used is the Latin Vulgate translation, which is readily available online. The Latin Vulgate Bible dates from the 4th century CE, and was largely the work of St. Jerome, who had been commissioned by Pope Damasus I to revise the Vetus Latina, or Old Latin Gospels, in 382 CE. The Latin Vulgate Bible became the official translation used by the Roman Catholic Church in the 16th century, and editions of this Bible are still used today. To help keep my lines straight while writing, I initially used the sheet below as a guide, though after the first few pages I felt more comfortable and didn't need to use the guide anymore. In many manuscripts, particularly in the medieval times, you'll actually see lines drawn onto the page to mark the boundaries of letters. Text can be quite difficult to read due to the lack of punctuation and word separation, though readability is improved through the use of the accent ink, used to denote the title as well as the start of each chapter and verse. Christians played a very important role in the adoption of the Codex, because the majority of Christian texts were written on codices, as opposed to other formats such as the papyrus roll. As Christianity spread throughout the Roman Empire, so did the use of the Codex. A Codex is better than a roll in many respects. In a Codex, both sides of the page are written on, which saves space and is more economic. Codices are also very easy to transport and to use. It is also very easy to add or remove sections of text from codices, 
because a codex consists of quires, or sets of folded pages. The binding of the codex can be removed, and then pages or quires can be either added in or taken out, even from the very middle of the text. This also allows for multiple scribes to work on the same text at the same time, which is ideal for books with many different sections, such as the Bible. Writing by hand is a very time-consuming process, and the first couple pages in my codex took me about an hour each, but I got up to a speed of about 25 minutes per page. This likely would have been faster for a practice scribe in the Roman period, who is more familiar with writing with a feather quill, with the script, and with the Latin language. But even they made mistakes while copying, and I found I made many of the same mistakes you see in old manuscripts. These include repeating letters, missing letters and having to add them in, and also crossing out letters, because I realized I had skipped a line. While the invention of the printing press revolutionized the speed and accuracy of book production, the design of the codex is still fundamental to the books we have today. For the cover of my codex, I chose to use birch bark because it's flexible and easily accessible. I cut a piece off a tree, soaked it, folded it around a choir, pressed it under a heavy weight, and left it to dry. Once it was dry, I cut it into the proper shape and scraped off the rough edges of the bark. Finally, to put the codex together, I cut holes in both the bark and the choir of pages. I then waxed thread by pulling it through beeswax and used it to sew the codex together. My completed codex is 32 pages long and contains chapters 1 through 6 of the Gospel of Mark. The text covers events including the baptism of Jesus, the commissioning of the Twelve Apostles, the parable of the sower, the beheading of John the Baptist, and Jesus walking on water. In total, it took me about 20 hours to complete. The hours of writing can get a bit boring, so you often find comments and doodles made by scribes, and I included one of my own on the last page.